Revelation 16. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials, that vials are bowls, of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Now, this first bold judgment you see on the screen, this first one is uh, the judgment of the sores. Now, it reminds us of the plague back in Egypt, back in chapter 9 of Exodus chapter 9, 8 through 12. Now we find here that these sores do not disappear. If you look on down in verse 11, uh, the people are still in pain, but you know what happens? They will not repent. And that's, that's a sad thing about this period. Now we are in the great tribulation. Don't I pray that nobody here is going. Now, if you're in Jesus, you're outside of the great tribulation. We'll be with Jesus, and we'll come back with him as he comes a second time. But we're taken out already, called the rapture, taken up, caught up. And we've already been taken out. And then the great tribulation period has come upon this, this earth, this awful time. So... But we notice the people, and we don't know what kind of the sore it is. You know, people have all kinds of sores, but uh, it would be where they, they just increase worse and worse. And uh, just consider almost the entire population of the world in that day. We're talking millions and probably billions. Uh, even if millions come to Jesus, which we believe it said many from all kinds of nations and tribes, will come to Jesus, but they will suffer and be killed and martyred for turning to Jesus and going away from the Antichrist and the kingdom of this world. But anyway, it's a, it's a sad time. There's sores. Now, secondly, we look at the sea. Look at verse 3. Revelation 16 to 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Now, so when the sea turns to blood, the sea is like a reservoir with wonderful life. You know that today. All kinds of great fish, small fish, large fish. And, uh, and it's been said that the water, salt water is a kind of catharsis for the filth of the earth. A lot of things pass through the ocean waters and it filters it out but in that day it's going to be blood it'll be plagued with this uh, uh, God sends it down as a massive blood bath of death and so the sea becomes useless and uh, so that's that would be a, a very sad sad picture to even think about you know now let's look on down to the third judgment here the judgment on the rivers the fresh waters. What's going to happen to them? Verse 4 through 6. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood. I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Now, the water supply is cut off. What happens at your house sometimes when they say they're coming by to cut the water off? It just kind of stirs everybody up. You know, we get a little nervous. We, we can't get any water. And... Uh, but that's, uh, that is just very minimum for 30 minutes, an hour, or three hours, or whatever. But we're talking the whole water supply uh, is going to be turned to blood. Now, the angel of the waters, it, it, it's like, he it thought about the Secretary of the Interior, our, our government. You've heard of that person who oversees the Secretary 
does that oversees the great lands and the waters and all the lakes of our, uh, our country. But God has his own secretary of water. And in that day, he declares that God is righteous and holy, and he's going to send this terrible judgment because of verse 6 said they shed the blood of God's people, his saints and prophets. You see, they're going to be forced to drink the blood of this water. And what an, what an awful sight that is. The fourth bowl judgment. The fourth. Verses 89. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Now, all earthly life depends on the sun. Without the wonderful light of the sun, and uh, you can't live. No life can live. Anybody been in the desert for a long period of time? If you're on the desert, just think of the day comes when there won't be any kind of water. And they're out in the desert. And the sun is so hot, it's going to burn them alive. That's the picture. They're going to suffer the greatest thirst and be burned. Now, the earth, we talk about 93 million miles uh, from the earth. In the great tribulation time, is the earth going to be shaken and and, um, move closer to the sun? I don't know that. Uh, some writers think that, and historians and students of the Bible. Uh, is it going to be some nuclear fallout that causes the earth to move in the, in the orbit closer? God has it planned the way he wants it. So anyway, it's going to be so hot. So if you were sunbathing, a lot of people like to stay in the sun. I've seen people got light tans, they got middle tans, they got brown tans. But what about being scorched with like fire, burned? Now, that's awful to even think about. So whatever is in the atmosphere that opens up, uh, the sun will be so hot in that day, uh, you won't have to worry about putting kind of certain lotions on your body. It won't make any difference. Note the scripture. What happens to these people? Do you see that? With all this going on, verse 9, they mock God, they blaspheme God, they curse God. It's just part, that's, that's the way most of the people are in that period of history uh, that's coming in the future days. That's what they'll do. They will not cry out for mercy from God. They'll be burned up. Fifth bold judgment. Verses 10 and 11. The fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Now, on this seat, this throne of the beast, Sandy Christ, This whole kingdom, he and his evil followers, are full of darkness. Not some spiritual darkness, but some kind of a phenomena that takes place. It blots out the light and heat of the day. And it becomes so heavy. It's called pitch black darkness. Have you been there lately in pitch black darkness? And they're just talking about in the house where you get a little light from the skies and all like that at night. No, we talk, I'm talking about pitch black. You can't see one thing uh, even in front of you or close to you. It's going to fall upon the kingdom of Antichrist in that day and all who follow him. And all the world at this great tribulation will have some degree of cooperating with Antichrist They could be sitting at some head of the world organization. We talk about United Nations, European common markets, or any kind of of group of nations who may have come together in the future period of history. Listen to the prophetic scriptures here. We won't turn to them, but I'll I'll quote them for you. Joel 2, 1 and 2. I'll blow the trumpet in Zion, and the day of the Lord comes, for it is nigh at hand. 
The day of darkness and of gloominess, day of clouds and thick darkness. Jesus, in Matthew 24 and 29, he predicted about the sun and all other light being darkened. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. That's what Jesus said. Torment's going to be so horrible. Verse 10, what, what, what did it say here about this pain? It's a gnawing of their tongue. Will they repent? No, no. They're going to continue in their evilness, ungodliness. It only becomes more hardened in their wickedness. Just to think of this heavy black darkness as a judgment on Egypt also back in Exodus chapter 10. You know, they sent the great plague God did of the darkness. Six bowl. 12 through 16. The sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Euphrates River. And the water there was dried up and that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they shall see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Now, the sixth bowl judgment is on the Euphrates River. If you know about Euphrates River, it's the longest and most important river of Western Asia. And you've heard of the Tigris and Euphrates. It kind of goes right through Iran. I mean, Iraq. If you'll notice that on the world map. You can check that out. 1,780 miles long. It ranges 300 to 1,200 yards wide. The depth is like 10 to 30 feet deep. Now, from the Persian Gulf inland, it says it can be navigated by small vessels for about 1,200 miles. Now, just think of that great river drying up. We know today that man can build lakes and rivers and canals that change courses of rivers. But remember, there are going to be a lot of natural disasters going on. The bombs, atomic nuclear weapons, I'm sure, will be unleashed all over the world at different times. This may be a great help to drying up the river. But it will increase in the great tribulation time, these disasters. Now, what is the purpose of the river drying? Do you see this in verse 12? Watch with me. That the way of the kings of the east will be prepared to come. Now, they're coming where? To the land of Israel. They're going to destroy them. They want to destroy the Jewish nation, Israel. The battle of the nations and armies that come from the east are called the Battle of Armageddon at the hill of Medigo. It means the place of troops or the place of slaughter. It's also called the plain of Esdrielon, the valley also of Jezreel. It's about 14 miles wide, 20 miles long. It stands on Mount Carmel and overlooks the plain area. Napoleon called it the most natural battlefield of the whole earth. That was centuries ago. Think of some history about Armageddon for a moment. Barak. He defeated the armies of Canaan back in Judges 5 there. Gideon. Remember Gideon? He met the Midianites. There in Judges 7, King Saul died there. 
in Armageddon at the, uh, the field of Megiddo. 1 Samuel 31, Titus and the Roman army used this area, as did the Crusaders in the Middle Ages. The British General Allenby, he defeated the Turkish armies in 1917 on this same area. So Armageddon has a real history behind it. But you just wait to that future time. Demonic powers will be influencing all those nations. It causes the rulers to assemble their armies at God's timetable. Now, evil spirits are working in the mouth of the Antichrist and his false prophet. He's going to influence all the nations of the earth. They're going to be involved here in this great battle. Kings of the east, we know that all east of Israel, that's the Arab nations, you start moving, and then you come to the largest population of the world. Where is it? What's the largest population of the world? China. Some years ago, I'm not sure if it's been 10, 50, I think it's probably a little over 20 years. And y'all may have read about that. They boasted of the 200 million man army. And you read there later in the book of Revelation, the chapters to come, about the 200 million. So, then the kings of the north. We know their nations going on north of Israel. You got Lebanon, Syria, and then on up in the northern part were the massive uh, superpowers. Russia. That's part of the north. Kings of the south being nations of Africa below Israel. We're talking everything relating to Israel now, little Israel. Kings of the west, I guess it could be some European countries, United States, uh, Canada, other parts of the Americas. It would be west of Israel, you see. Now, Revelation 16, 13, 14, we talk about these three unclean spirits like frogs. It doesn't mean they turn to frogs. It's a, it says like them, it's a symbol of ability to leap and spread deception from the dragon to the Antichrist and his false prophet. And then they teach the nations to do the same. So demons are working miracles at this period. And the idea of deceptive dreams and visions and they put fear and bitterness and hate among all the nations of the earth of that day. And that day of Armageddon called in verse 14 the great day of God Almighty. That day the armies of the world will be destroyed. All the ungodly and evil of the world will be finished. Jesus will return to rule and reign here on the earth, over all the earth. Godliness and righteousness will be brought here by the Lord Jesus himself. It's a great warning of Christ to the people of the earth. Watch and be prepared. Those who have kept themselves unspotted from following after Antichrist will escape horrible judgment. But they must be clothed in the white garment of the Lord's righteousness they must trust and seek the righteousness of Jesus. And Jesus says something interesting in verse 15. How is he going to return? Do you see it? He comes as a what? Thief. Thief. Does a thief come expected? You expecting a thief to come? No, he's not going to come. It's always unexpected. Revelation 16 and 15. Now the seventh bowl judgment verse 17 and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air judgment on the air and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying it is done there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great and the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. Great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, 
And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. The air is poison. The breath of life, the people who are there at that time, when they step out to breathe, they breathe poison. The power of Almighty God is unlaunched in nature. The violent storms, the worldwide, probably the worldwide, the greatest earthquake of all history will take place. You know, in Haiti, you were just reading from Samaritan Purse, uh, their article from August. And uh, Haiti has been hit with earthquakes at different times, you know. And on the past several weeks, that awful time. California is a lot with the fault lines and the great uh, splitting of the earth. And then you go from different countries of the world. You've heard about them at different times in past years. They happen here or there. But notice this great judgment at the end of the great tribulation. It will shock the whole world. It won't be just a shaking of one area or one state or one little country. It'll be shaking the whole world. And the great city of Jerusalem will be shaken, divided in three parts. Babylon, the capital of Antichrist, is going to be broken and collapse into three parts. Whole cities will collapse throughout the world. Great devastation and destruction and horror. And the great world capital, Babylon, God will remember it and pour out his cup of the worst wrath there is. And much of the earth will literally break up. It talks about the islands and mountains uh, disappearing there in verse 20. Storms are going to rain. Great hailstorms from heaven. That says hailstorms of a talent. Uh, some of that, sometimes it's probably different, little different measurements, but... Some note that I'd say a talent of silver is like 125 pounds. And some others say it's maybe around the 100 pounds. So you just think of that in your mind, uh, just a 100 pound uh, weight uh, of a stone. In the land of Egypt in the seventh plague against Pharaoh, God sent what? Exodus 9, the hailstones. It just tore up everything. In Revelation 16, 11, they blasphemed God from heaven and did not repent. Now, here's a story. I could not find who wrote it, but I understand it happened in history. Right here in the United States of America, in the state of Georgia. The pastor tells a story out of the state of Georgia. There was a city... I don't, it says it's a Las Vegas kind of city. That's all he said. He didn't call a name of an area. He just said it was a Las Vegas kind of city in Georgia. Gambling, drunkenness, sexual morality. You go through the whole shebang of the vices of mankind. There was there a Methodist evangelist. He pleaded with the people to turn to Jesus. They mocked him cursed him, spit upon him, threw things at him, beat him physically, and mocked the Lord. One day, he is being beaten, I guess, he was on his knees. He cried out to God, Oh God, bring judgment upon this place. If they will not repent, destroy it. The dear Christian banker was in that group that day. He had watched him. He would always encouraged him, he and his family. So they took the preacher to their home. Helped him, you know, because he was beaten at different times. Uh, probably needed food to eat. Uh, people took things from him, I guess. He needed help. He needed rest. Very soon after that prayer, the sky darkened. The rains began to fall. Powerful lightning began in fury. Hailstones began to fall. Flood waters 
began to rise and roll. God's judgment wiped out the whole city. It's recorded that people were running. Lightning struck them and burned many. It didn't say just a few. It said many alive. Who survived? The evangelist survived. And that banker's family survived. Say what you want. God brought it then. He's going to bring it again to this world. And I thank God I'm with Jesus. And I pray you're with Jesus. And I trust that you are. The curtain of time is closing. We must awaken from spiritual sleep. Fear the living holy God. How, how many are really taking God seriously? How many reverence and humble themselves before Almighty God? Is there repentance in our hearts, being sorry for sin, turning from our sins, turning to Jesus by faith and trusting Him and following after Him and living for Him? I hope you do that. Stay close to the Lord. Stay close to His Word. And let us live for Jesus day by day. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your word. Lord, this is a hard, hard thing to think about the days coming in the great tribulation period. But we know that you're coming to take us out of this old world. And we will not face it. But we are saddened and heartbroken for those who mock you, God. Curse your holy name. And make fun of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who died for all of our sins. And was buried and rose again the third day to live forever. And he will come as a glorious mighty king. To rule and reign this new earth and new heaven. Bless your holy name. In the name of Jesus, amen.